Hello, everybody, and welcome to my Impact Wrestling Review, the Go Home Show edition before Hard to Kill this Saturday. A lot going on that card, a very stacked card, I should say, for um, Hard to Kill. Um, coming up, some matches I didn't even really know till tonight. Some I really question uh, why they even have some of these matches for Saturday's show, and I'll get to that in a second. But um, going um, through <clears throat> going through um, tonight's show, though, we did kick it off with uh, Taya Valkyrie versus Kimberly. Rosemary's out there with Taya as uh, Kimber and Yana Perazzo. A good match, but kind of surprising that they had Taya kind of lose before the pay-per-view to Kimber. Now, obviously, we did see the... Um, New Sue Young or Susan, technically. So um, we have another incar incarnation of uh, Sue Young. We had Susie. Now we have Susan, which looks like a secretary or was she a lawyer. She looks like a businesswoman, technically. Okay, that's kind of what she is looking like right now. So I don't know what this Susan thing they're trying to pull off right here or where they're going with this. I don't know. But basically, she was there for the distraction with Diana, which... um. Kimber was able to uh, well roll up Taya for the win. So, like I said, it's kind of surprising that they had her lose um, before the pay-per-view. Like I said, Taya's finally gotten back in the title picture. I already said this before about Taya being stuck in purgatory, if you ask me, ever since she lost the knockout title and being involved in too many comedy segments. But uh, now they have her back in the fold. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, we're going to see what happens this Saturday. But interesting that she lost before the pay-per-view and this Susan is now involved with Deanna and them, so we'll see what this businesswoman thing takes her, all right? But um, moving on, though, no. uh, next, uh, they did go to uh, Kenny Omega, uh, you know, Doc Gallows, uh, K Callis and uh, Carl Anderson, or Bullet Club, or some type of Bullet Club, which they were talking about what was going on the line tonight, and, um, you know, Carl Anderson going one-on-one -on -one with um, Rick Swan, so he's going to handle it for the pay-per-view. We got another Tony Khan and um, Tony Schiavone promo, somewhat still bearing impact, uh, talking about, you know, uh, we're helping impact uh, generate um, revenue, um, you know, with these ads we're paying for and whatnot. And, you know, we allowed Omega to bring the best title, all the sports to their show and everything. And basically, they hyped up the card and talked about, you know, Brian Cage, since he's going for the TNT title. Oh, yeah, he was a thing in Impact, right? Yeah, he was, uh, he was, he was the world champion here, right? Wow, that, that's something. Basically, we get more of Tony Khan and um, being, you know, passive-aggressive, burying the company and, you know, um, just talking about them and all, oh, yeah, how to, you know, you start talking about Don Callis and then talking about, yeah, you can bring the good brothers around here, you know, we, you know, um, you know, I thank Impact Wrestling for uh, letting their, um, you know, come on here and, you know, their internet following, um, you know, watched them last week when they showed up. And, you know, watch two to the real network like TNT, basically making fun of access. Like I said, unfortunately, a lot of this stuff is true and whatnot. But I don't know where this is going. Like I said, I feel like Impact is only getting the short end of the stick of this when it comes to these ad paid advertisements because it's like, okay, we got AEW uh, promoting their show and burying you guys at the same time. But um. Why can't Impact have a paid advertisement? Here's the thing that could be on AEW for Wednesday's show. Why don't they pay, you know, have, um, I don't know, why don't they get their own ad and promote their own pay-per-view so people know what Hard to Kill is so they can watch it this Saturday? Why don't they do that? All right? It's a go-home show. So why don't, you know, tonight or tomorrow night, whatever time you're watching this video right now, why don't they get their own ad on Dynamite and just say, hey, here's our card for, um, you know, Hard to kill. Take some shots at AEW, you know, okay? Uh, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes it's just it's been very one sided. It really is. With you know Jacksonville Dixie there, but um, next they went to Sammy Callahan and um, you know Eddie Edwards talking about this, which apparently they have a barbed wire massacre match coming up at the pay per view. Okay, uh, one. I'm surprised they're even doing a barbed wire massacre. You know, I'm already kind of up and down on this feud again. Like, I, I like the Eddie and Sammy one the first time. The second one, not so much. And why are we rushing so fast to a barbed wire massacre match when this has only been going on, like, what, two, maybe three weeks? Some people believe that when they brought Kenny Omega in, it looked like a lot of plans got made if either thrown out or had to be shifted around. So, it's like we've only seen this Eddie and, um, you know, Sammy thing for, like, what, two, three weeks? And now they're doing a barbed wire massacre? I guess it's, you know, to... You know, kind of get people to watch the show Saturday, but why are we having that though? I, I don't know why. I don't know why we're doing a barbed wire massacre for that. Um, 
Next, though, uh, Chris Bay and uh, Roy Raju versus Mannequin Suicide. Which one's which? Uh, a good tag match. Um, Chris Bay picking up the win with the uh, springboard cutter. Obviously, we have a triple threat match between Rohit, Manic, and um, Chris Bay this Saturday on the pay per view. So, this is not a bad part of the show. I would say not a bad match. And like I said, it kind of hypes up for uh, what's coming up. So, can either Rohit or, you know, Manic or anybody win the title or retain the title technically? So, looking forward to that match. Um,. Next, Ty Rosemary in the back. As Rosemary said, she has a plan to take to take care of this whole Susan problem. So you just watch out, and uh, we'll see. Next, um, Diener, which I don't know why they just can't call him Cody, which uh, we already had someone named Cody in another company. But Diener, um, which, um, you know, it's not even Cody Diener. It's just Diener when he is Tommy Dreamer. Um, a lot of stuff going on in this match. Obviously, it ended up in a DQ finish because Jake Diener got pissed and um you know tried to go for um cody and whatnot and went for a dq eric young and uh you know joe dorian came in uh because well rhino and um joe dorian were kicked out when rhino came for the save but dorian took them all out and you know um eric young hit the power driver onto um tommy dreamer then uh so obviously we still have a six man which i don't know why we need a six man for this saturday we got a six man in the main event but i don't know like so i'm liking this Cody Diener thing that's going on right now, this transformation with being, you know, Eric Young's underling and whatnot. I do like that. Jake Diener, I think he can be something. I just think he needs to repackage and kind of get out of the whole hillbilly gimmick and whatnot. He has potential. I, I really believe he does. He just needs a, he needs a different gimmick. Okay, he needs to be repackaged. Uh, next, they had a contract signing in the back with Scott Demore for the Knockouts Tag Titles between Kara Hogan and Tasha Steele versus Havoc and Nevaeh. Uh, Kara and Tasha, yo, we beat y'all two times. We're going to get them titles again. And actually, you know, Havoc and Nevaeh got they see some grabbed about a throw. So y'all do a lot of talking. But we're going to walk out with those tag titles that are hard to kill. They start talking trash again. Brian Myers showed up talking about, you know, I've been beating a lot of people lately. I need some competition here or something. And uh, next time Josh Alexander comes up and I, and for some reason, Scott Demore says, you know what? Why don't you just have like a no DQ match and sell out your issues, okay? Just, just do that. Rosemary went against Tennille Dashwood. Um, not much to say from this match. It wasn't bad um, and whatnot, but I think the story behind this was, I know um, Caleb Conley got involved, but next thing you know, Crazy Steve from came out of nowhere and chased Conley, which um, Tennille was about to use the hairspray on Rosemary again, but Rosemary grabbed it and sprayed her and hit her with a spear for the win. So, yes, Decay is back, folks, and I'm kind of glad to see Decay back again because Rosemary, I just feel like it hasn't been the same Rosemary in a very long time. And Crazy Steve, ever since they brought him back, it's not the same badass Crazy Steve from uh, Decay. And a little bit more goofy. Maybe when he was in the Menagerie when he was first brought in the TNA. So, if we, I know Abyss isn't here in the, anymore and he doesn't work in Impact and whatnot. But we could get some type of Decay thing coming back into Impact, okay? So, I'm actually glad they're a team again. So I, I always kept saying, like, you know, since Crazy Steve is here, why would y'all reform Decay? Could we get a new member from it? I don't know, but... I'm glad they're back as a team again. Uh, next, Moose came out. Um, talk about the whole Willie Mack thing. Basically, guess he can get a title shot now. Uh, he went against Matthew Palmer after the whole three-minute thing last week. Basically, Moose beat the living crap out of this guy, so the ref stopped it. So, Moose, they made him look vicious. And, yes, I did see Genesis, the match with Willie Mack and whatnot, and how he beat the living hell out of him to get a title shot of Rich Swan. Then just said, I quit after that. So, at some point in time, he will get a title shot against Rich Swan. I wish that would have been the pay-per-view. But, like I said, I think plans changed when Omega was brought in. And I think Moose would have won the title at that time. But, at some point in time, we will see a title match from there. But, in the end, then we got um, Rich Swan versus Carl Anderson. Uh, good match, uh, to basically lead off into the, you know, set you up for this Saturday's pay-per-view and whatnot. Swan getting another roll-up on the Ritz, um, Carl Anderson for the win. Um, but as, you know, the match was over, they went backstage. The Machine Guns were watching. Next thing you know, um, Kenny Omega and Lou Gallows come in, attack, uh, the Machine Guns. Swan comes in to help. Then, you know, Carl Anderson comes in. Then it's a big brawl and um, you know, it's a big brawl. And that ended the show right there, um, you know, just setting up for this Saturday's pay-per-view. It is Saturday, I believe, January the 16th. Yeah, I, I think it is. So, a good go-home show, I will say, um, for Impact. Uh, like, 
for the pay-per-view. So it, it was a, I thought it was good. It set you up. Like I said, they have a very stacked card for this Saturday. Um, so, yeah, I think January 16th. Um, yeah, January 16th is Saturday. So I, I am looking forward to the. It's a, it's a big card. I got about eight matches. Because what do we got? We got, um what, Decay versus um, Tennille and Caleb Conley. So, like I said, Decay's coming back. I don't know why we have Ethan Page fighting himself in this Karate Man thing. Now, to what I've heard, that Ethan Page's contract is almost up, so this may be one of the last times you see him. And I wish they would have kept him around, especially for the North, because he may go to AEW. Honestly, I wanted to see the North versus FTR, and I think that would have been a very great match to watch. I like both teams, but whatever they got going on with Ethan Page and this Karate Man thing, I don't know. Maybe he does go to AEW, I'm not sure, but... Josh Alexander, maybe he's about to be a single star, maybe. So, I don't know. But I think it does kind of suck that, you know, you can't get FTR versus the North. I think a lot of people want to see that. Eddie Edwards versus Sammy Callahan. You already heard my thoughts earlier about this whole barbed wire massacre thing. I'm surprised it's even happening. But it's a good hook. It's just this feud is just played out. And it feels rushed in under two to three weeks for a barbed wire massacre match. So, I don't know. Um... Eric Young, Diener, and uh, Joe Doring versus Cousin Jake, Rhino, and Tommy Dreamer in an old-school rules match, which Tommy Dreamer can play all the words all he wants. It's basically an extreme rules match, however way you want to put it. I don't know why we need another six-man when your main event is a six-man tag, but it should be good either way just to probably get Eric Young and him over, if you ask me. Deanna Peraza versus Taya, that could be a really great match this Saturday. I know there's rumors about um, Taya's contract coming up. Uh, it is up. I'm not sure if she's still going to be around the company or not. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, I've been hearing things about it. Manic, Chris Bay, Rohit Raju for the X Division title. That should be good. I, th I think um, I think Rohit may get it back, maybe. Havoc and Nevaeh versus Kier Hogan and Tasha Steeles for to crown the new Knockouts Tag Team titles. My money is on Kier Hogan and Tasha Steeles. Okay? My money's on them. Regardless. And in the main event, Kenny Omega, the Good Brothers, Bullet Club, Nat Bullet Club, whatever you want to call them, versus Rich Swan and the Motor Machine Guns. I think Kenny and them may be going over. I'm not really sure. I do expect Rich Swan and the Machine Guns to be on AEW tonight because Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows came in last week. So I think, like I said before, if they're going to help promote the pay-per-view, you might as well have them come out on Dynamite and do something on that show, you know, tonight or tomorrow, whenever you're watching this video. But I think that is a way to help, you know, promote the pay-per-view. Okay? I, I think it is. Because, um, I've already said earlier in the video, Impact, y'all need to do an advertisement or something on AEW to uh, get this pay-per-view rolling. Like I said, it's a very stacked card. I just think they should Push it on AEW also and have them. Like I said, we had the Impact Tag Team Champions come out last week. Obviously, Swan and the Marcy Machine Guns got to come out. Uh, but other than that, though, that is my review uh, to Impact the Go Home Show. I will say one more thing before I go. There is a new broadcast team now. Uh, Matt Stryker and D'Lo Brown will be on the pay-per-view this Saturday and, you know, this coming forward. I, I'm glad they got Matt Stryker. I like Matt Stryker. I'm glad they was able to get him. D-Lo, I'm not really sure. I'm almost surprised they didn't keep uh, Josh Matthews on commentary. Trust me, there's a lot of people sick of Josh Matthews. I didn't mind him in Madison, but I think people even tell you that Madison was a better commentator than him. So they made Josh like the, I mean, he's like a senior producer now or something. So we'll see what goes on with that. But Matt Stryker and D-Lo on commentary this Saturday. We'll see what happens uh, since they're the new broadcast team for Impact. So other than that, I'm done with this review. See you guys later. I will have a review of Hard to Kill. I'm Hopefully, me and my friend are going to be doing a double joint review of Hard to Kill. He's never done an Impact review, and he actually wants to do this one. So, um, we'll see what we can do this Saturday coming up, and I'm looking forward to that. But other than that, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, at Night890. Check out the other videos that are uploaded right online right now. Um, I will be back for AEW and NXT Wednesday night. So, yes, other than that, I'm out. See you guys later. Peace.